after midnight, Governor Mike DeWine was sworn into office. Governor DeWine went straight to work, putting his stamp on the state. He signed six executive orders overnight. We are united in our passion and commitment to ensuring that all of our children, all of our children, lead meaningful, fulfilling lives. All of our children, 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 all of our children. All of our children. about mine, your judge, Patricia Sanders, CPS, committed crimes in the court to take my son out of Kentucky, the only state he's ever lived in. All of our children, what about mine? Dave and nobody here wants to correct the record. I'm not going to answer that question. See though how it says. I'm not going to look at that. Let's see how it says. No, I'm not looking at that. Okay. They told you yesterday. What's going to happen? Or not what's going to happen, but what is, uh, oh, I mean, what's in the process here. Okay? Yeah. That's what we got to do. Okay. okay. But I just wonder, so nobody's going to correct the record. Well, I, I'm not going to well, answer it says either. There is enforced laws. Get a get a special counsel. You're telling me. You're telling me. You're telling me. You can't put a special counsel when a prosecutor's office are in on the fucking crime. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. It doesn't work like that. Bullshit. What about the prosecutor that got in trouble for sexual harassment? What about that? Who got him in trouble? That's that's not that's not how that's not how it works, sir. How's it worked? Then how can I get this prosecutor off the case? You need to talk to talk to your attorney. Jesus fuck. Or if it's an immediate situation, you need to call the police. It's corruption, ma'am. I have. The police stations filed three false police reports on me. Then, then 
then you Jesus need to Christ, then man. call the sheriff's department. Call your That's department. who I'm talking about. That's who, uh, Ma'am, in that same county, they covered up my sister's murder when I was a kid. That's why I, I moved away a long time ago. You, you can also get another attorney. One day next week, I'm going to come over to Kentucky to your house and sit down and talk to you. Dave, not, you're not welcome that. in my house. I mean, yeah. Yeah, in the in the, in, in the courtroom back there. I mean, it's on the it's on the complaint. It's on the. But he's told me to tell you it's on the complaint though. You just told me to tell him that. I mean, it's on the complaint. It said somebody had... There is no crime left to Perjury. Joseph Adkins. Isn't it perjury or crime? I don't have to pee. I don't have to pee yet. I'm not, I'm not, don't, I don't have to pee yet. I don't have to Take this and go. No, I'm not on to pee yet. Take this and go. Do this. Now. I don't have to pee yet. Now. You don't have a choice. Go. 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 You can't just lie and take people's kids. But you're wrong. Child Protective Services does it all the time. Family court judges do it all the time. I'm in a case that can't be real. I'm in a, a case in Ohio where a judge illegally took my son from me. We both live in Kentucky. And to cover up the unlawful ruling on the case, Judge Patricia Sanders, the very next day, calls in Child Protective Services worker Dave Carey and has him file a false complaint that she knows is false because the day before I was in her court. And I'm in a case where Ohio is illegally taking my. Kentucky son, who's only lived in Kentucky by either parent, period. I'm in a case in Ohio that's 
illegally got a child from Kentucky in foster care for a year and a month in the case that it ruled on. And they do this and try to get by with it by charging the other parent who doesn't have custody. Now think about that for a minute. If this were, this, that's federal kidnapping. When you unlawfully take somebody's child, that is federal kidnapping. And Judge Alan Lemons from Portsmouth tried to cover up for Judge Patricia Sanders. The courtroom testimony is out in public. It's out there. And CPS Dave Carey, the person that made the complaint, admits to lying multiple times on the complaint. And they, I'm in a case that can't exist. A case of a Kentucky five-month-old baby who was illegally taken by charging the parent in Ohio who didn't have any custody. And Judge Allen Lemons rules that a child is dependent in a state of Ohio that he's never lived in. And this is federal kidnapping. And I'm I'm shocked that it's still not the case. The deposition still isn't finally ruled on. The 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 begin the first part of it was ruled on, but it's not final. And they're mad at me because I exposed them. And they have not allowed me to see my own son since November 22nd of 2019. I haven't. I'm and they're the criminals. If this doesn't change child protective services, family court, like this got to be opened up to the public. Cause I'm not the only one. This happens to all kinds of people. Cause we automatically think if somebody gets their kid taken, then well they did something to deserve it. But no, they're taking child protective services and family court are taking people's kids, and these and the parents haven't even been charged with any crimes. How the hell do you take somebody's kid if you haven't been charged with abuse or neglect? That's insane to me. You can just take somebody's child. And then by lying, you can take somebody's child. If you don't believe me, listen to the courtroom testimony. And then you tell me. But you can't just lie and take people's kids, but you're wrong. It happens all the time, and here's proof. The last paragraph says, of course, have the custody control who pursued Mari and now resides as Eva Pub. That wasn't true, was it, at that time? At that time, we did not have an open case. I did not know who had physical custody of the child at did, that did, time. Did you not testify that you terminated your case in May because Joe had an agreement that he got custody residential status? I said he had custody. Okay. I said then why did you custody. say Eva had custody? I said physical custody just now. I don't know who had the child at that time. Okay. Was the child here on the 16th of July in Ohio? I don't know where the child was. Was the child ordered to be brought back to this jurisdiction? Yes. So the child was in Kentucky? I don't know where the child was. Okay, well, we called fair. the grandmother and said, get the child. Fair enough. But the child was not in this jurisdiction, to your knowledge. It was brought back from somewhere. Brought back from somewhere. I don't know where. So the child was not in danger on July 16th. Fair statement? I don't know. That would be up to okay. Well, Joe, my client was here. Eva was here. They weren't in charge of the child at that time. So, what's your dependency based on? The child's brought back from a different place. It's not cheap. Roger's not ninja that day. What are you basing the dependency? Indicated on your the sudden part of that form. Um, question being, did the actor act or neglect the abuse of dependency for a large county of Ohio? Yes. On that form, correct? Mm -hmm. You just testified the child wasn't even in this jurisdiction. The child had to be brought back to this jurisdiction. So that's not a true statement, is it? I don't know where the child was at that day. Could you not read in? I don't know. I you swore on the right. The dependency occurred in this jurisdiction. You put yes, you signed it under oath. Yes. You don't know where the child was. Correct. Yeah, you said the dependency occurred in Lawrence County. Yes. No. Of your clients possibly believe that it was appropriate to use.
witness perjury and false evidence in order to impair somebody's liberty interest in the continued care, custody, and control of that person's children. How could they possibly not be on notice that you can't do that? I understand the... How could, they, how could that possibly be? I understand the argument that it seems to be common sense and our ethical... It's more than common sense. It's statutes that prohibit pro perjury and, and submission of false evidence in court cases. State statutes. Are you telling me that a, that a person in your client's shoes couldn't understand you can't commit perjury in a court proceeding in order to take somebody's children away? Of course not, Your Honor. Of course not. But isn't the case over then? And the case is over. Because... Case dismissed, right? Wrong. Judge Allen Lemons rules the Kentucky child dependent, meaning the child is homeless or destitute or lacks proper supervision. He rules the Kentucky child has only lived in Kentucky by either parent. Dependent in the state of Ohio, a state he's never lived in, in a case that charges the other parent that didn't have any custody, and that's after CPS admits to lying on the complaint, the whole reason you're in court. Ask yourself, why didn't Judge Allen Lemons dismiss the case? Why? I would love somebody to explain to me how a case like that doesn't get dismissed after the only people, the only witness admits to lying. How does a judge rule that a child is dependent, meaning he is homeless or destitute or lacks proper supervision, in a case that charges the parent that doesn't have any custody in Ohio of a Kentucky Kentucky five month old baby who they place in foster care how just if somebody can explain that ask Judge Lemons how that case isn't dismissed a case that illegally takes a five month old Kentucky baby from a Kentucky father by charging a parent with dependency in Ohio who doesn't have custody and CPS admits to lying on the complaint the reason you're in court this is who is in charge of this is this is who is this is our judicial system this is who we trust with children Someone explain to me how this is possible. You just explain how this can happen. There's no running from it. I know when they, when people go for re-election, they're going to have to explain this. But what other kids are they doing this to? CPS in Lawrence County has all kinds of scandals you just haven't heard about yet. But how? How can this happen in our country? Ask Me Too Family Court. Ask the parents in that group on Facebook. Check it out. They know. Ask Dr. Phil Exposed CPS. Ask the family and the parents in that group. They know. Ask Child Protective Services. Call Protective Services. Ask them. They know. Stop CPS from illegally kidnapping children. Ask those families and those parents. They know. Attorneys who fight Child Protection Services false accusations. They know. How about against CPS Family Court Corruption? They know. How about whistleblowers and victims fighting against CPS, SSS, family court corruption? They know. FightCPS.com. They know. Ask those parents. Successfully fight child protective services. Ask those parents. CPS corruption. They know. Ask all of them. And way more than that. Check out Facebook groups. Just check out some of those groups and ask those parents. Ask those families, grandparents, everyone that's been impacted by this kids for cash scam because we think that judges and child protective services are the good guys but you're going to be shocked once you start checking out some of these stories you hear and you read about and everybody can't be lying my son's case is out it's right in, it's out in public it can't be denied and it's still going on a year and a month later why why would why would child protective services why would judges lawyers why would everyone do stuff like this to kids because the same reason people do everything for money and it's a this is going on worldwide it's going on in other countries just 
check out some of the Facebook groups I mentioned. Ask those parents. Ask those families. Thanks to social media and thanks to Facebook, we see things that we have never seen before. And some things are going to be uncomfortable. Some things are going to be hard to, to talk about and deal with. But if we just sit back and don't say anything, if we don't stand for children, if we don't do the right thing, we're no better than the people who are, who are doing this. And that's not, that's not who we are. This is the Ryder Cash Story. Brought to you by Ryder Cash Media and Ryder Cash News.